Cluj became a very expensive city from the point of view of the housing market. This happened in, especially in the past uh, seven years, so after 2014, um, which is a trend that uh, is uh, characteristic for all the European uh, cities where there are jobs and in parallel with the formation of areas which are depopulated. Amikor feltöltöztem Kolozsvára, akkor úgy gondoltam, hogy én itt akarok élni, itt akarok megüregedni, de egy évvel ezelőtt még nagyon biztos voltam ebben, de egyre inkább azt érzem, hogy, hogy a jelenlegi fizetésem, vagy egyáltalán az esélyeim szerint nem engedhetem meg magamnak azt, hogy Kolozsváron éljek, vagy, vagy nem tudom. Tehát, hogy azt érzem, hogy most már elbizonytalanultam ebben a helyzet. It's a common knowledge that financialization is, is defined as the situation in which the financial actors, investment funds, banks, uh, non-banking financial institutions are having a bigger and bigger influence on the housing market. So housing became a financial asset, so something that uh, people invest into affording even, you know, to buy um, housing units and leave them empty uh, or use them do just during uh, touristic seasons or use them as Airbnb or apart hotels. Hát például az Romániában, hogy nem kellett volna a lakásokat kommunizmus után így elengedni, hogy magánkézben legyenek, hanem mondjuk az állam is tarthatott volna meg valamennyi ö, ö, apartamentet, azért, hogy utána ne, ne legyen az, hogy most már ilyen horribilis lakásárok vannak a magánszférában, és egyszerűen nem, nem, tehát nem az, hogy, hogy stagnál, hanem egyszerűen folyamatosan csak nő, 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 nő. És szerintem fontos lenne, hogy akkor mondjuk visszavásároljanak apartamenteket, hogy valahogy beállítsák egy, egy normális We have a problem concerning the public stock. It's quite low in Cluj, less than 1%. And in this sense, I think the local authorities in Cluj should invest more in social public housing and also in affordable housing. But I think it's a problem not only in Cluj, it's also at, uh, at the national uh, level. We do not have a social, affordable housing uh, uh, stock. And uh, mostly everywhere in, uh, in Romania is less than 1%. Also, we need, as other major cities in Europe, uh, have these kind of policies uh, in collaboration with uh, private uh, real estate developers to take 5 or 10 percent out of this private uh, real estate development and to come with uh, social and more affo affordable uh, rents. At this point we do not have local regulations concerning uh, this and we do not have a national uh, legislation. One of the biggest contrasts in the city is the existence of uh, a, resi a residential area nearby the landfill of the city called Patarut, where uh, around 1,500 persons are still making uh, a living. 
So there, there, there are very long histories, uh, and in, including histories of eviction during the 1990s when the land in the city became more and more uh, important uh, for new constructions. Uh, those people who were having vulnerable situation um, were, were evicted and directed towards Patarud by the local authorities. We are in Patarut. Everything that you see around me is uh, highly toxic. Uh, there is the toxic ramp of the pharmaceutical company. Right there is the waste dump of the city. One of the waste dumps over there is another waste dump. Heavy metal concentrations are up to 1,000 times the alert level, which means that uh, the authorities should intervene. Uh, they've been knowing about this situation since 2009, so before the evacuation and still did nothing. Okay, over there you see the Dallas community, uh, 750 people in that direction, 800 meters, is the Cantonului community that is around 800 people and uh, behind the camera it's again 150, 200 people more, that is the Rampa community, the, the, gar the waste dump community. Uh, there's no school, there's no, mm, no, no medical facility, no nothing. Problema e cu chiria asta și dacă se poate face ceva sau să audă care va să mă ajute, să ajung la ăia mari ca să mi se iei jos datoriile astea, nu numai după mine, cei după patru prunci a mei. Dacă vreau și au posibilități să le aducă la copiii noștri, că sunt copii mari, un teren de fotbal să poate să se joace, ce pot ei să aducă din la mână, din la mână, îți copii care n-au un parc? Petarat is a striking example of environmental racism in which uh, the community of Roma population from the city uh, were expelled and uh, we want to alert about this kind of situation and support uh, the community in the finding of solutions uh, at the local level but also national and European level. You go to these barracks and ask anybody what they need and they will, they will say that they want to get out of here. The problem is that getting out of here is not easy. And uh, you need to understand that uh, these people stay here not because they want to, it's not because it's their culture, it's because they are lacking the resources to make the move. But everybody wants to move out of here. The European Union took their feet off the pedal of Roma integration, now everything has to be green and uh, the green discourse is not really rolling in this toxic waste area. And, uh, because of the green discourse being so heavily uh, middle class uh, targeted, uh, I don't see any, uh, any reasonable hope that uh, the big greening discourse of Europe will hit any soon this uh, toxic and forgotten area. You don't anymore have well enough financed international bodies and international European political interests to uh, reasonably put pressure on local authorities. What can work is, uh, is shaming. And uh, in the last uh, 13 years since the Costa evacuation, uh, there was a homeopathic thread of every year activities, protests, remembrances uh, that kept the theme, kept the topic on the local public agenda. What is the average pension here in Romania? It depends on a lot of things, but that's the average. We made a performance about uh, how hard it is to rent or buy an apartment here um, at Cluj. We are in a situation when it's a daily crisis for us uh, and we wanted to see if um, anyone shares housing crisis with us too. So we made a quiz and uh, the winner could get a golden square meter here in Cluj. So the winner became a property owner, which is a very hard job to do here. And uh, we also asked some personal questions about the living situation of each individual. And they had to answer by squatting or standing up. 
if it was uh, if they also had the problem they had to squat down if they did not they had to stand up. So here is you can you can stand up and there will be the yes. second question. The second question. I think it's a it's a problem everywhere. So we made it um, according to data um, that we got here in Cluj. But uh, even if the wages are higher in other countries, the rent is also higher at the times. And it's also a question if um, there are enough houses to rent or not. So I think it's a problem for not just our generation, but the generations before and after us uh, in Europe. So we, are, we were really happy that we could make this performance with um, people all over Europe. plans to upgrade the roads and infrastructure in the northern part of the city beyond I the think it's important to have this kind of transnational uh, events and uh, small festival as uh, Trans Europa is trying to do in, uh, in Cluj. Why? Because we uh, gather more uh, experiences uh, and we uh, talk about similar problems that are everywhere. So we, we see this kind of, um, let's say, capital movements everywhere. And in this sense, the activists which are trying to tackle these kind of transnational uh, movements of the capital should uh, show their so solidarity. And I think it might be uh, beyond this kind of uh, symbolic uh, solidarity, because what we are trying to do at this uh, point, to have this kind of EU uh, uh, directives in, in Europe, that put uh, social housing and affordable housing on the agenda, not only at a local or a national level, but also at a European level. Uh, directive would help uh, enormously. Why? Because we need to construct a social uh, Europe, a more social Europe, and also a, uh, an environmental uh, Europe uh, as well. Say more. Uh, I want to say that uh, industrial heritage, um, ecological uh, issues regarding so much, and also social issues are totally related. And I totally agree that we need a common agenda to discuss uh, together these issues. Citizens, citizens of Athens, citizens of Europe, citizens of the world, welcome, welcome, benvenuti, benvenuti, bienvenue, j'oublie mon français, calo si frate. This is going to be a polyphonic gathering and you have come at the right place at the right time. The Pnyx, the Pnika of Athens, on this glorious day of 23 September 2023. A day so glorious that the, the gods themselves have forgotten to pour a rain on us and storms. Maybe this is a lucky moment. Now, I'm Calypso. And with Niccolo, we will ask you to constitute the very first People's Assembly. Since the very last People's Assembly in this place, 2,300 years ago. So we would like to invite you to close your eyes, close your eyes, and imagine yourselves perhaps a hundred generations ago. Or maybe even a hundred generations in the future looking back at all of us right here and thinking about what kind of topics we might have been talking about. Democracy is something you do together. Uh, it's something that's a collective activity, which means that we occupy spaces with our bodies uh, when we organize. So democracy requires spaces. Some of them are more symbolic, uh, like the space behind us, which speaks to a whole heritage of 
democratic creation, but also of violence and destruction. Uh, it leaves ruins behind it. Clearly, our current democratic system is stuck. I'm not saying it's broken, but it's stuck. Um, people vote less and less, especially among the younger generations, which I am proud of. So we really have to question ourselves why. And we really have to think of alternatives to involve people into politics and not just the young generations. Our current democratic institutions are malfunctioning. How do we unlock them? How do we really improve the way that people can directly interact with them? Well, this is what we're trying to do. This is about bringing alternatives, not destroying our current systems in place because democracies might not be perfect, but so far they are the best system that we know of. So how do we improve them? How do we make them more accessible and more tangible? Well, citizen assemblies is one of the tools that we can use, that if we should use, in my opinion, to make democracy more accessible for any kind of generation or underrepresented group in current institutions. So for that, we can use a tool like citizens' assemblies. We can use, of, of course, also European citizen initiatives, petitions, because hand in hand, our current institutions and deliberative, participative, direct democracy tools, such as citizen assemblies, can actually do magic. And because if they properly work hand in hand, if the institutions consider citizen assemblies, popular assemblies as allies, well, they can really truly be representative of our democracies, of our needs, and of how we want to create a joyful and fruitful future for ourselves. It is uh, lovely debated in academic circles and in the policy making field, the European Union, that mostly European democracy faces a bureaucratic problem. We talk about the syndrome of Brussels and we also talk about how we can ameliorate our democracy. Uh, I think that one of the most interesting indeed ideas... In democracy is about all of us, citizens, people, and all of us interacting in spaces where we may disagree even strongly, may reach some agreements, may never reach agreement, but at least we share a space. That's what democracy is all about, writing ourselves in the collective stories together. We have spaces like the parliament, like governments, like governments sitting together, like the commission for the EU, uh, that do their thing. And then we have the people having discussions, having uh, engaging into uh, with the media or there's elections, suddenly everybody's kind of talking. But these different worlds are not connected enough. And yet at the center they take decisions that really have an impact on our everyday lives. The public spaces where we can gather are increasingly either privatized or policed. Uh, and we don't need to be afraid of putting our bodies in those spaces and claiming our democratic agency, claiming our democratic rights. Uh, but we need to do it in a spirit of joy and gathering together, just as much as a spirit of fierceness and determination. And so in a way we are talking about a world where citizens are taking the initiative and we hope more and more, we see more and more. And the question becomes how does the state, how does the power that be, those who have the power of the purse, the power of regulation, the power of the law, how can they empower these processes? rather than these processes waiting for the state to give it to them. There's so many different ways we can imagine to be connected uh, transnationally, but that is still to be invented. I would say it's the next frontier of democracy as European Alternatives has been exploring so brilliantly. Uh, we need to have a brave approach to the European elections and not be intimidated by those who say that these elections will inevitably lead to the victory of forces that are opposed to democracy or opposed to freedom. So we need to be brave about it, but we also need to set out a vision of what a desirable Europe could look like uh, over the next five years. It's going to be a crucial time for our democracy, but also for our climate, for our planet. There's elections not only in Europe in 24, but later in the year in the US as well. And so it's our responsibility to set the tone of the debate, uh, the planetary debate about the future of democracy. Go. Oh, yeah. Come on. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So the uh, DEVO program uh, is approximately 12 to 14 months project that uh, tries to unite 60 uh, young and not so young activists from different European countries. For now they are from 21 uh, European countries uh, and through a series of trainings and interactions and peer-to-peer -peer learning it aims to help them uh, make different changes for their communities and to mobilize them, discuss uh, and explore the notions of democracy in the context of the upcoming uh, European elections in 2024. So it's a very beautiful diverse group um, that is doing very important things for the world around um, and working on uh, a variety of topics uh, that are related to activism, to politics, to the NGOs here. My name is Ami Wechkan. I am a new board member in the Euro European Alternative, but I was a member of the Room to Bloom board. I'm uh, from Senegal, born and raised in Senegal, spent my entire life in France and now living in Sweden. So I'm, I'm here to bring like uh, another perspective, I think. And uh, as in my normal life, I'm an artist, activist, and a strategist. I hope that uh, I will be part of the solution. Transnational organization could be part of the solution. I really recognize that there is a lot of activism that needs to be valued here. But I s still think that the problem is like you're just thinking for others first. And this is a European centered way of seeing and telling stories. And I think this is a problem because uh, this way has been used in a different, different shape. One of them is colonization and imperialism. It's to, how can we like um, be the oppressor and want it to be the solution? This is not possible. If you want to be the solution, we need to listen to the victims first. We need to involve them. We cannot turn around, you know, like using the same structure all the time. Even the even, even the the speech of decolonization has been stolen by European-centric activists. So for me, the, it, it's really need to re, rebuild before rebuilding, deconstruct everything and decolonize properly the European and the Western generally way of thinking, way of shaping the world, way of judging, way of putting like uh, ranks. There is many, 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 many layers that need to be decolonized. Practices is one of them. Using the sensible is another of them. When I talk about uh, the sensible, I'm thinking about the arts, you know. You listen to music, you have an emotion and then you cry. This is art. And I also wanted to just to point one thing, it's like telling stories, reshaping, uh, changing the narrative, start by decolonizing really, really our mindset, our way of thinking, and the terminology, the word we are using, and the expectation that is super Western that are put everywhere. There is like other place on the, in this entire world that are already in this process, but they didn't have a name on it. Why not listening? learning, inviting, and then building together. I am Annu Kempfainen from Helsinki Pride Community and I work as an executive director. Helsinki Pride Community uh, does all year round work with the community, LGBTIQA plus community. Uh, we do social work, we do youth work, we do community work, and we also organize uh, the biggest human rights and culture event in Finland, which is Helsinki Pride Week. I think it's, uh, it's a, hopefully it'll give some inspiration and insights for people, uh, how to build communities, how to engage communities, and how to change the legislation and system through the community. It's so uh, important to share knowledge and share good practices. Uh, I think that activists tend to work by themselves a lot and it doesn't do good. It, it's really like too exhausting, but it's also, uh, it's not, um, it just doesn't make sense to build, uh, like to build things from scratch. Uh, all over the game, all over again and in different places instead we should just like meet meet each other and like share our good practices good knowledge my point is not to wrap up because we want to be heroes so it's the narrative it's the narrative again <laughs> 
So I have been in the activism, um, the political activism space uh, since I was a child. Uh, right now I focus primarily on electoral uh, change and bringing more progressive ideas and thoughts and uh, movements into electoral politics because you know we're facing across the world very similar things I think in the progressive movement so learning from past mistakes learning from other countries uh, about uh, what's working and what's not working and I think that's what's really great great about this program is I'm I'm learning a lot from other people who are in the similar space Transnational organizing is important because so much of what happens, as we're seeing in the news, in one country may affect global stability. It might affect, affect uh, other other countries and their politics. Um, we learn, you know, when when one far right uh, leader rises up in one country, another movement learns in a different country. So it's really important for this type of activism to continue because we also learn from each other. One minute, go. Oh, yeah. Come on. My name is Maria Nignat and I'm from a small village from Romania but I'm currently living in Bucharest. My current work is around environmental and climate justice. Um, so I do work with the youth organizations and I've been doing capacity building with them for the past two years at the European level or in, in Romania. Um, but I'm also, um, I'm also active at the local level in Bucharest and uh, working at the national level with, for example, WWF on a campaign for specifically for pollinators action. Transnational organizing is important because I think it allows us to connect with people and to use different tools and resources um, to reach a, a specific goal. For, so for in this sense, with climate justice, this is a problem that affects people despite their borders and despite where they live. So transnational organizing, it helps us actually to tackle a bigger problem than um, where we live. And create these artifacts. So that's like the technical... My main focus is uh, making a voice for Afro-descendants in Portugal. Uh, people of African heritage from Brazil, from Haiti, from the continent of Africa, Colombia and the rest. Transnational organizing is important because it gives us a unique voice, a single voice, not only in Europe but in the world. And it uh, reduces wastages, it brings about efficiency and results. Mi chiamo Carla Monteleone, faccio la contadina. Qui ci troviamo in questo posto che è un bene confiscato alla mafia nella provincia di Palermo. Recentemente abbiamo cambiato l'ordinamento culturale di questa azienda per un po' eh, aderire meglio ai cambiamenti climatici e anche alle situazioni contingenti che ci sono. La strategia che noi stiamo sperimentando è quella, cioè di creare un, con la crescita delle piante un ambiente totalmente autosufficiente, che non abbia bisogno di nessun input, pochissima irrigazione, solo di soccorso, diminuire le concimazioni perché più stimoli le piante più poi se non hanno, non hanno l'acqua ci sono 50 gradi e stai solo massacrando. Quindi bisogna insomma ridisegnare tutto, tutta l'idea dell'agricoltura che si aveva 50 anni fa. Proteggiamo un poco i broccoletti. Questo è lo raccolto, però sono tutte disseminate qui. Non so Eccola. Sì, sì. Madonna. Cioè, bellissima. 
Allora, io sono Enrico Milazzo, sono attualmente un postdoc all'RCA Royal College of Art di Londra. Facendo ricerca di campo sostanzialmente sull'agrobiodiversità mi sono molto presto imbattuto nella cooperativa Noe. Già assolutamente c'era un percorso di ricerca sia in ambito orticolo che frutticolo sulle, sulle varietà locali eh, con l'idea che chiaramente queste varietà fossero in grado di Uh, richiedere meno lavoro, richiedere meno, meno input energetici al suolo, alla pianta, uh, mantenere anche forse se si può dire uh, rinegoziare gli standard produttivi che un'agricoltura normale dovrebbe avere, uh, così come rinegoziare la fatica che un'agricoltura un normale dovrebbe richiedere, quindi vuol dire anche ovviamente un'agricoltura con meno sfruttamento o con nessuno sfruttamento. Del lavoro, del lavoro umano insomma quindi poi penso che all'interno di, di questa ricerca di questa cornice ci siamo trovati nel fondamentalmente appoggiarci a vicenda per ehm, provare cercare eh, vecchie varietà nuove varietà che fossero utili alla realizzazione di progetti agroecologici come quello che c'è qui alla Noe Um, per cui poteva darsi che Carla mi menzionasse un pomodoro che si ricordava o che aveva sentito oppure che mi mostrasse uh, un tipo di, uh, di pianta che già stava coltivando e che io non conoscevo questo poi significava che io nel, nei miei viaggi di ricerca potevo o trovare la, il seme che lei mi aveva chiesto o portare in giro i semi che lei mi aveva dato Penso che lì si attui uno dei, uno dei principi sicuramente dell'agroecologia che è quello di, di immaginare eh, e di usare sementi eh, autoriprodotte dai, dagli agricoltori e dalle agricoltrici, dai contadini eh, per un motivo sostanzialmente. Le piante eh, debbono contare sul mutualismo con le altre specie. Voglio dire, una semente autoriprodotta non può che contare sui propri sudati vegetali e sulla, e sulla capacità di cercare alleanze nel, nel suolo. Una semente riprodotta in laboratorio o in, o in serra è chiaro che non, non si basa su questi principi perché abita e si riproduce in un ambiente controllato. Quindi una semente riprodotta in pieno campo con questo tipo di coltura anno dopo anno non può che basarsi su questo, sull'alleanza. Un'altra zucchinata? Sì, sì. Vabbè, andiamo allora. Sì. Uh, di qua... Qua forse ci sono quelli, quelli, quelli gialli. gialli. No? Eccoli. Allora, Terra Terra nasce come progetto che porta insieme l'agricoltura, l'arte e l'attivismo. Il nostro approccio è sempre intersezionale. Noi vogliamo guardare le problematiche, ma non isolarle dai contesti in cui si muovono. La parte dell'arte si esprime in progetti artistici che facciamo noi stessi, oppure anche in mostre che noi curiamo spesso insieme alla curatrice Laura Breitschmidt che insieme troviamo delle artiste o artisti che si occupano di tematiche molto vicine alle nostre. Noi abbiamo questo spazio in centro città dove poi possiamo permettere alle persone a mostrare il loro lavoro, performances. Poi la parte attivista è un pochettino ovunque. Noi proviamo a non solo fare una cosa che punti verso l'ecosostenibilità, verso l'agroecologia, ma anche rifletti su altri aspetti. E per noi, se si parla di semi, spesso si parla anche di difficult heritage. Io prendo un po' di peperoncini da seme. Le piante alimentari che arrivano fino ad oggi hanno una lunghissima storia che riflette nel bene e nel male la storia umana. Un esempio che abbiamo studiato particolarmente sicuramente è la melanzana rossa etiopica. Oggi è conosciuta come melanzana rossa di rotonda, il nome scientifico è Solanum etiopicum, quindi già da questo nome si può 
eh, intuire, sospettare la sua origine, nonostante sia narrata come oggi semplicemente in modo, come dire, molto banale, semplicistico, come una delizia eh, locale. Noi abbiamo man mano eh, scoperto eh, il fatto che questa melanzana è stata portata in Italia dai soldati reduci dalla prima campagna coloniale in Etiopia. Per noi la coltivazione di questa pianta significa iscriversi nella tradizione di questa coltivazione con tutte le sue problematicità, però allo stesso tempo creare momenti in cui si prende consapevolezza di quella storia e occasioni anche per parlare del passato coloniale italiano, che è sempre una pagina piuttosto grigia, semplificata, banalizzata, minimizzata, sempre sotto lo stereotipo di italiani brava gente. Vuoi fa? Sì. Ma anche quelli giovani prendi? Spesso la gente ci chiede, ok, ora voi provate a rinominare queste varietà, eh, però come ce la fate, come l'impact qual è? E riflettendo specialmente l'anno scorso su questa abbiamo sviluppato questo progetto che si svolgerà questo anno che si chiama Critical Seeds of Resistance che è un progetto che porta insieme um, di nuovo l'agricoltura, l'arte e l'attivismo tramite varie forme e soprattutto al centro di questo progetto ci sta la Transnational Critical Seeds Library che è una seed library um, decentralizzata che noi iniziamo insieme a varie Seed Saving Realities internazionale e questa Seed Library si suddivide in quattro categorie di cui una è legata al Difficult Heritage perché il Difficult Heritage in sé non è una forma di resistenza questi semi solo perché loro sono legati a storie di colonialismo o di razzismo non sono atti di resistenza ma il momento in cui si prova a raccontare questa storia diventa un momento in cui questo possa essere un momento di um, resistenza. Sì, diamo il benvenuti e benvenute. Um, oggi è una serata abbastanza speciale perché affronteremo varie tematiche tutti insieme. Questa serata è destinata a parlare dell'agricoltura in Sicilia e delle problematiche legate a questa. Oggi è la prima occasione in cui portiamo davvero tutti insieme. Il nostro modo di, um, di questo progetto, del nostro duo a terra terra, è che portiamo insieme l'arte, l'agricoltura e l'attivismo. Le nostre e... pratiche sono sempre nate con un intento relazionale. Per noi la sfida più importante infatti era stata proprio mettere insieme e far incontrare il mondo dell'arte contemporanea e il mondo dei farmers, degli agricoltori e delle agricoltrici che non è stato assolutamente facile, perché è chiaro che sono mondi abbastanza uh, separati. E per quanto riguarda invece la questione della transnazionalità, è chiaro che noi facciamo delle pratiche locali che però hanno risonanza in tante altre pratiche, di altri collettivi, di altre realtà, e questo l'idea del confronto continuo con queste diverse realtà che si trovano in altri luoghi, che però affrontano spesso problematiche comuni, che sono legate spesso al climate change, spesso alla questione dei, dei semi da salvare. Alla fine posso dire che vi sono delle, delle, delle problematiche che accomunano in varie parti d'Europa e del mondo le comunità che vogliono intendere il rapporto con le piante alimentari e con l'agricoltura in un certo modo. E questo confronto ci ha molto aiutati, sia sul lato della coltivazione, sia sul lato dello sviluppo delle nostre pratiche artistiche, e sul tipo di progetti che selezioniamo e scegliamo a cui dare voce all'interno della Terra Terra Lab.